Hey gang, John Baccarelli here with your Lake St. Clair ice fishing report. It is Thursday, February 20th, and we're going into a weekend. We're coming off of a, another major cold front here. It's supposed to get really cold again tonight, and then we're supposed to start warming up through the weekend. So start out with the ice fit, with the ice report portion of this, because I know a lot of you folks are still really squeamish, and we've been the conditions keep changing because we've actually been making ice really since last week, honestly. So. Um, starting out up at the north end, up by Bobby Max, I was able to get out on the ice right off of the seawall there today, and uh, the ice out there was, you know, all pretty much black ice, gin clear water, no snow on the ice anywhere, and um, you can see in the distance from there that there were, were guys out on the black ice as well, out in front of the uh, Fairhaven boat launch, which is going to be our our next stop. So. At the Fairhaven boat launch, I was able to get out on the, onto the main lake ice there as well. However, I am going to talk about some things that you're going to have to watch if you're going out off of that Fairhaven boat launch. So that Fairhaven boat launch coming out, if you were to walk straight out, there is a, there is a portion of the ice that is actually kind of like a, any geologists out there, it's kind of a subduction zone, okay? So the ice, one, one plate of ice has slid underneath the other and it's filled with water and that was frozen over and I could not walk over. It's only about five or six feet wide. I couldn't really safely walk over it this morning. Um, by tomorrow that could be different, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because by Saturday it could be different again. You might be able to walk over it today or, or later today and tomorrow, but by the weekend when it warms up, you might not be able to. But it's not the end of the world because if you go to the right off of that, uh, that rock jetty, you can, you'll see that that, that, uh, that area where the ice has slid under itself and left that open, that open pocket, um, it extends out maybe 40, 50 feet, and you can walk around it pretty easy off to, the, off to that south side of the jetty. Or you can go through the cattails over by Brian's and get onto that, that, uh, uh, the old ice and completely avoid that uh, little bit of a subduction zone. And then again, it may just freeze up solid enough that you don't have to worry about it all. It's not one of those situations that you're going to die if you go through there most likely. It's only a couple feet deep right there and there was ice underneath it, but it's definitely going to ruin your day if you go through right there. So it's not that the ice around it was bad or anything, it's literally that it sunk down. So it's kind of weird. I was surprised when I saw it. So guys, are, again, guys are fishing out there off of Fairhaven, went up to the raft. Of course, that's the oldest ice on the lake right now. There was a lot of people out there. They were both on that old white ice. They were in the marina around the side and they were also out on the brand new black ice out in front of that as well. So um, now the fishing report side of it, if we're gonna stay up on that end, they are catching perch out there on that black ice and I guess somewhere in, around in on, the, on that white ice as well. They're still picking panfish up in the marinas and in all that, that, uh, that white ice Probably more off to the left, I think, guys, we're doing better on that white ice on some of the panfish and then over in the marina. So that ice is, again, it's some of the oldest ice on the lake, and I'm sure it's going to get hit a lot this weekend. Um, a lot of the canals all the way down from there back to the south are frozen up pretty good. Um, I've been fishing um, in behind the store there on and off all week, and uh, it's been kind of amazing the numbers of fish that are in these canals. Um, we shot a little bit of video footage on a day that uh, the bite was really tough. We were marking a ton of fish and we dropped the camera down and it was almost insane how many fish are down there. So for, for you folks that aren't fishing with, with electronics, you don't have to go quite as insane as some of us do fishing with flashers and trying to get these fish to bite. Um, but man, when they get tight-lipped, tight they are really tight-lipped. So, and that's been the case, I think, the last few days is that you know with this cold front and the bluebird conditions that we've had and the really cold nights, the bite has really kind of slowed down, but the guys going into this weekend with the warm up coming, I expect the bite to really turn on. So the bite could get really good in some of these canals and, and out there uh, on some of that, that, that new ice up there on the north end. Now when it does get warm on probably about Sunday, you guys are really going to have to watch on any of that new ice that's out there because it is only a couple of inches thick and it's going to get soft in a hurry and you may have trouble getting on and getting off. So. Um, you're going to have to just pay attention to the weather, you know, and use really good judgment. There's no need to have an auger up there on any of that new ice. It's spud only condition. So now we're going to come back down here to the south a little bit. Um, I stopped uh, at uh, the boat launch at Selfridge 
And lo and behold, there was quite a bit of ice that had formed out there um, off of the boat launch and just recently got a report from somebody that some brave soul actually ventured out there and was on that new ice out in front of the boat launch. So I guess don't be surprised if, if by tomorrow you see more guys out there. Um, but uh, again, I did not test that ice. There was open water off to the, off to the left, off the point coming uh, out of the canal um, behind, our, out of, behind our store and behind uh, Angler's Point Marina there. There was an open water pocket there for sure. But uh, everything was really tight in the, the mouth of the canal for the boat launch itself and then back into the boat launch. So next stop, coming back to the south even a little bit further, um, we're gonna stop in at, uh, at uh, South River Road, Harley Ensign. Um, now, it was kind of amazing. They, I was there just checking ice earlier in the week and it was just floating ice out there in front of the boat launch itself. And I was actually able to, to do a little keg hopping. Um, and that's not bar hopping, that's keg hopping from chunks of ice, the pretty good sized chunks of ice in there that were several inches thick. Um, they were all cemented together and I was able to get out a little ways there just checking the ice. Um, not what I would recommend anybody doing there by a long shot, but I was able to get on that ice and who knows it may be thick enough for some of you braver guys. Um, it was spud only, um, you know, by tomorrow morning, who knows. It's really cold, it's gonna get crazy cold again tonight and it's gonna make more ice, there's no snow cover. So, you know, there's gonna be places that you're gonna be able to get on tomorrow that, that I wasn't able to get on uh, with any level of confidence today. Now, we're gonna drive to the other side of the canal and we're gonna look at the area that we call Candles um, for most of my life, but it's on the, the south side of the parking lot there uh, of the boat launch at Harley. And uh, I was able to get out on that ice and did take a measurement and the spot that I measured was about three inches thick. So, and that was gin clear, black, hard ice. Now, with that said, there was a lot of open water out to my left and then there was patches of open water out in the bay and then there was open water down where that, where that canal comes underneath the road. So that's gonna be an area if anybody ventures out on, you're gonna have to use extreme caution. You're gonna have to really watch the wind and if we get an onshore breeze and it blows a bunch of wave action in there, it's gonna bust all that up. So, but uh, it, was, it was really solid, you know, gin clear black ice that I was on when I was on that today. Now we're gonna go run down to Metro real quick because that's gonna probably be our last stop and our longest stop of the, the day here on this, on this tour. Um, there were reports, and you guys saw I shot some video yesterday of the ice off of the beach. So I'm just gonna get right to that. I spent considerable time there today. I parked in the parking lot, um, walked out from the flagpole and got on the ice right in front of what used to be the guard shack out there. And I was able to walk on the ice without, without any trouble. It was just me and the spud. Now it is a long walk for you guys, so if you are gonna try to get on that, you're gonna definitely not be dragging, you know, uh, shanties or, or jet sleds or anything like that. It's gonna be spud over the, or spud over the shoulder in a walk regiment. Um, but I was able to get on the ice there. Um, I will I will give you some pointers though. There was some areas that was like piled up seaweed mixed in with the ice. That stuff, as soon as it gets warm, is gonna get crazy thin and unsafe. It's just gonna soak, soak up the heat and it's gonna burn right through the ice. But there was a lot of really stacked ice over there as well that was kind of laying on its side and that stuff was really solid. There was also some black ice when I got down closer to the basketball courts because I kind of got on the ice and then I worked my way down and that black ice was a couple of inches thick at least and it was, it was pretty solid stuff. So um, again, you know, I'm just filling you guys in. I'm not saying that that's a safe place to go, but there was about 150 yards of ice out there or so, and we all know, you know, what that's like out there when we get limited ice fishing-wise, and you don't have to get out very far at all. Now, it was, a, it was an offshore wind when I was there today, so I was trying not to commit suicide and get caught on an ice flow. So it could blow out of there today. It was blowing 15 to 20 when I left there, and it was directly offshore, but she seemed like she was stuck pretty good, so. Um, we get off of that ice now, we're gonna go, we're gonna check the basin. The basin at, uh, at Metro, that North Basin, if anything, it's gained a little bit of thickness. Um, it's definitely not lost any thickness, although you can definitely see where the top layer is starting to you know, get, a little, get a little funny. It's got a lot of air trapped in that top layer. So when we do get a big warm up, you're gonna have to really be careful over there. 
Um, and on any, any of this older black ice, you're gonna see that there's more air trapped in it just because of the freeze and thaw cycles that we're going through. It will start to honeycomb, and on those warmer days, it'll get much softer um, in a hurry than what you're used to. So um, now we're gonna go over to the marsh. You're gonna look at the marsh. That marsh is still, it's actually locked up tighter now than what it's been. Um, there were a couple of guys on it when I was there. Um, I don't have any great reports of fishing over there because it's really had very light activity on it. That's honestly, guys, for the whole lake, this weekend is almost kind of like first ice in a lot of respects. Last weekend was too, but there's a lot of areas that have just really not had any pressure. So without any pressure, there's really not been much for fishing reports. So, you know, there's a lot of areas that are kind of untouched that you're not even going to see a hole that's been cut in them. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there, but you're going to have to be very careful, especially with the warm up coming uh, this weekend. Saturday is going to be probably the better day because it's going to be the, the first warm day. And by Sunday, we're going to be even much warmer. So you're going to have to be use more caution if you are out there. Um, the extended forecast has got us going back cold again, I think starting Tuesday night. So we're not going to lose everything with this warm up this weekend, but you're going to have to pay more attention um, going into next week. But who knows the way it's been, we could actually even make more ice going in go, by next weekend than what we have now, which is kind of crazy considering what we had for the first portion of this season. So um, that's all I really got for you guys right now. Um, we do have uh, big decoy goldens in. We're going to have pike goldens in the store again at both stores this this weekend. Um, and we've got, we've got a good supply of uh, shiners and all the other live bait for you guys. So um, probably the best ice conditions right now that we've had all season by a long shot. A lot more opportunities than what we've had all season. So if you can get out, um, take advantage of it and uh, make sure you're using that spud and just, you know, use some common sense. Hey, if you like this video content and you want to get updated as soon as the next video is out there, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon and you'll get notified as soon as the next video is up.